impressed if you can come up with that. Because you should make... No, good guess. I don't know how you'd know unless you listen to history in the elementary, but who was the president that signed it first? John Hancock. And he signed it in big, bold strokes so that the king would have no problem reading his name. And you know what's kind of cool? It gives me a little goose bumpy. A year from now, or a little over a year from now, you will stand in front of that document, the original, and see that signature. That's pretty cool. Okay? Now, we're not done yet because we didn't have 100% positive reaction to the Declaration of Independence in America. I'm going to tell you the difference. The reactions were actually varied. So we passed this thing on July 4th. It's signed by the President John Hancock in great big, you know, bold print so that the king can read it without his glasses. But there are still some mixed reactions. Patriots, also known as Whigs, that's on your ID sheet, rejoiced at the news, did they not? Fired up. Great news. So Patriots, along with, excuse me, also known as Whigs, rejoiced at the news. Loyalists, also known as Tories, refused to join in the celebration of independence. Loyalists, also known as Tories, refused to join in the celebration of independence. And there were many other Americans that simply met the independence with indifference. Not concerned really either way. Okay, there were some of those. So there were three different reactions to the Declaration of Independence. Independence. Patriots, also known as Whigs, rejoiced. Loyalists, also known as Tories, refused to celebrate. And there were people in the middle that were indifferent that didn't care either way. Okay, what group of people in the colonies do you think made up the Tories, the Loyalists? What type of people were Loyalists? Wealthy landowners. Very good. There's several more, but wealthy landowners. Know that. A lot of the Loyalists were wealthy landowners. And they're gonna, I'm going to tell you in the next test material why that makes so much sense, why they would stay loyal. Who else? Who else is wealthy besides landowners? Merchants. Wealthy merchants. Who else would be more loyal in our in America? Lawyers, wealthy lawyers. But what other group would be loyal? Thank you. British political leaders that are living in America are going to be loyal. Oh, this is a great day. So we got British loyal officers of the king. Wealthy landowners, wealthy merchants, wealthy lawyers. What other group that might necessarily not be wealthy, but would be traditional enough to be loyalists? Leaders of what? Not necessarily wealthy. Say churches. Very good. Church <laughs> leaders. Very good, Mackenzie. Church leaders. And to be quite frank with you, these wealthy merchants, wealthy landowners, Wealthy lawyers, church leaders, and former officers of the king, where did most of those loyalists live? In the south. Keep that in mind, because we're going to talk about that later. So we're going to have a huge problem if any battles in the south, because there are going to be so many loyalists there that we're going to have to not only fight the British, but the colonists are going to have to, the patriots are going to have to fight the loyalists also. Now I'm going to just give you a quick preview. In some battles in the South, there's one battle in particular we'll talk about where there was only one British soldier there. It was Patriots versus Loyalists. And it gave us our first idea of what was to come in 80 years. Civil War. Seriously. So, very nice job. Here's the plan. I'm going to give you this handout. Don't leave without it. Your job shh, is to read this over the weekend and be prepared for discussion Monday. Tuesday, review, Wednesday, test. For those of you that will be out doing your student council things, you will have to read this, be prepared to come by. I do not plan to have any quiz on this unless I come here and think, oh, nobody read it. So have a clue on this Monday, those who are here, make sure you read it. 
Tuesday's review will be on the video, and when you guys come back from student council, you're going to have to take a test. Okay? So here, let's get these for you go here. You won't be late. Pass them back. Get them in your binders. Get them in your binders. Read them, read them, read them. Pierre Borovic, do you have a message in the office? Pierre Borovic. Student Council students, if you're going to the WAP conference, pick up an itinerary for Mrs. Vickers two days. <laughs> Well, see, here's the problem, Derry. You made me bring it on Thursday and then I forgot. And then you bring it. So, the day before, we we won't get to DC. Or we won't get to tell this. I got these plans. I've never taken kids to the because there wasn't, we didn't use that. At this point, we're going to change the jobs a little bit. And maybe get to some of these, these type of places in colonial areas. They went on, they went to Melbourne, like on Father's Day. It was the, that's the busiest, because it's the father work. Oh, I bet. I'm going to make some arrangements for you to do some little, few different things. Because we're going to, because I'll have to be the two years. You know what I mean? So, anyway, I'm pretty excited. You're going to be special. You are. Oh, boy. <laughs> but no, just, it's just easier. Because you, you, you have seen these things. Yeah. yeah. Okay, what's the deal? Come on. Okay, come on. Okay, I'll show you Thank you. 